RX 10,000 fixes the biggest issue gamers have. AMD is a genius for this. But before I get to that, gaming GPU prices could be about to go up, and AMD just released their biggest upgrade ever. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. This video is sponsored by OBS Bot. Okay, it's news time and first up for today is if finding a GPU at a reasonable price wasn't hard enough already, AI companies have found a way to better use gaming GPUs. In fact, there's a company that's literally selling a kit so you can double the memory of an RTX 4090. That's right. As you can see right down here, it discusses the fact that NVIDIA's 4090 isn't in a clamshell configuration like Pro Cards, meaning it doesn't include memory chips on both sides. But a company in China is now selling a kit for just $142, which includes a PCB that's designed with that clamshell configuration with most everything pre-installed, so you can get a whopping 48 gigabytes of memory. AI, of course, relies heavily on VRAM, and all you have to do is solder the GPU and memory chips onto the PCB. In fact, there's already a really popular video up that shows you exactly how to do it. And while it does take some equipment to properly desolder and solder it back on, it's not all that difficult. And if you look on eBay, there are already a ton of models on sale right now with 48 gigabytes of memory. Basically, it's beginning to feel like the Ethereum crypto boom before they went proof of stake. Hopefully that doesn't end up being the case, and luckily I do have a story about AMD helping to lower the cost of GPUs later in the video. But first, I'm over here. Now I'm over here. And no, I do not have a cameraman in case you were wondering. I've got a webcam like you've never seen before. It's called the OBS Bot Tiny 2 Lite, and it's the ultimate AI-powered webcam that can do a ton of awesome stuff, like auto-track your movement using its two-axis gimbal, and even auto-zoom. Plus, you can use hand gestures to better control exactly where you want it, all thanks to their deep learning neural network. But it doesn't stop there, because this bad boy comes with a massive one half inch CMOS sensor for gorgeous, extra crispy 4K video. I'm using it for this ad, and you can see that it's right up there with my $2,000 camera setup. It also has a dual omnidirectional mic with noise cancellation for very nice audio if you don't have your own mic. There's also different streaming modes depending on which social media platform you use. Want to get close up to you? There's a mode for that. Want it to focus on your upper body? It's got you. Want to blur the background? No problem. Concerned about privacy? It has a sleep mode that you can schedule so it points the camera down. You can even use customizable presets to add all of your favorite stuff for a quick button press. I mean, there's really not much it can't do. Basically, you've got to check out the OBS Spot Tiny to light down in the description below. Once again, that's the OBS Bot Tiny 2 Light, and that link is in the description below. Next up, AMD just released their biggest update ever. I mean, this is huge. Not too long ago, I covered the launch of AMD's Fidelity FX SDK 2.0 for developers. And in that video, I discussed something not many people were talking about. Specifically, this part right down here, where it states that they'll be able to automatically upgrade the FSR version to FSR 4 through a driver. The game needs to have at least FSR 3.1 to upgrade to FSR 4 up scaling and 3.1.4 to upgrade to FSR4's frame generation. Essentially, what this means is that game developers won't need to update their games to support AMD's newest FSR4. It can be done via a driver update if you meet those specs. Well, AMD has officially released that driver update, and as you can see down here, it says FSR4 can be enabled for most games that support FSR3.1 with DirectX 12. And because of that, FSR4 4 is instantly available in over 85 games now, just like that. Remember that FSR 4 is a massive upgrade for AMD, and it includes much better upscaling based on machine learning, similar to Nvidia's DLSS. Now, to enable all of this, all you have to do is, of course, get the new driver update, but 
Then ensure that the FSR4 toggle is turned on and simply enable FSR3.1 within the supported game. Of course, this can't change the UI in the actual game or anything like that, so it does say FSR3.1 in the menu still, it just updates the resources to use FSR4 when the game is launched. And what's awesome is that this will clearly work on future updates as well. I'm not sure if it'll be good enough for major updates like FSR5, but it should work for quite a bit into FSR 4. Either way, this is huge news, so you definitely want to install this update as soon as you can. And lastly for today, RX 10,000 GPUs are a massive change like we've never seen before. If you remember, not too long ago, I talked about what I believe AMD is doing with their uDNA architecture. Remember, AMD themselves confirmed that uDNA combines their RDNA and cDNA architectures together. So given that, and the leaks from Moore's Law is Dead, which show a ton of their GPUs are made from just two different dyes. For example, the highest in gaming card is just a cut down AI accelerator. The reason this is such a big deal is because let's say AMD isn't selling that many of their AI chips, but they have a ton of demand for their gaming cards. Instead of being forced to trash the chips AMD already made for AI, they can repurpose them as gaming cards. This gives AMD a ton of flexibility to not be left holding the bag. Well, what AMD is actually doing is even better than what I originally thought. In a new tweet from the very well-known leaker Kepler on Twitter, he's talking about the codenames for the upcoming chips, and he's asked by a confused user if AT2 does not equal Magnus, and Kepler's response is that AT2 is the GMD chiplet, Magnus is the SOC, and it's that first part that's really huge. As 3D Center explains, the quote GMD chiplet, a graphics memory die with arithmetic units, cache, and memory interface, but without a video slash media engine, and without a PCI Express interface. Essentially, what this means is that, for one, AMD is moving back to chiplets for their next-gen gaming GPUs. But unlike RDNA 3 when they last did it, the Display Engine and PCI Express aren't hardwired into the GCD, meaning the chiplet can be used across multiple products, since a console SoC doesn't need certain things that a desktop card does and vice versa. Basically, this allows AMD to easily switch out different components to easily make the chips they want, and to combine smaller dies for higher yields, which is exactly what AMD did to make their Ryzen chips so incredibly cost effective and essentially beat out Intel. Simply put, this should help to bring down the cost for AMD GPUs even more so they can better compete with Nvidia. And if the rumored core counts are right for next gen, AMD could potentially crush Nvidia's highest end card, while at the same time being much cheaper. This really could get interesting.